Hello, hello guys, it's Ahmed here, and today I'm going to be reading a story called Matilda, written by Roald Dahl and illustrated by Quentin Blake. The characters included in the story are Matilda, Michael, Miss Honey, Mr. and Miss Wormwood, Bruce Bogtrotter, Amanda Thrip, and Miss Trunchbull. Matilda, illustrated by Quentin Blake, Roald Dahl. The Reader of Books It's a funny thing about mothers and fathers. Even when their own child is the most disgusting little blister you could ever imagine, they still think that he or she is wonderful. Some parents go further. They become so blinded by adoration, they manage to convince themselves their child has qualities of genius. Well, there is nothing very wrong with all this. It's the way of the world. It is only when the parents begin telling us about the brilliance of their own revolt, revolting offspring that we start shouting, Bring us reason! We're going to be sick! School teachers, school teachers suffer a good deal from having to listen to this sort of twaddle from proud, proud parents, but they usually get their own back when the, when the time comes to write the end of term reports. If I were a teacher, I would took up some real scorchers for the children of doting parents. Your son, your son Maximilian, I would write, is a total washout. I hope you, you have a family business you can push him into when he leaves school because he sure has, as heck he won't get a job anywhere else. Or if I were feeling lyrical that day, I might write, it is a curious truth that grasshoppers have their hearing organs in the sides of the abdomen. Your daughter Vanessa, judging by what she's learnt in the sim, has no hearing organs at all. I might even delve deeper into natural history and say the, the per periodical cicada spends six years as a grew up underground and no more than six days as a free creature of sunlight and air. Your son Wilfred has spent six years as a grew up in his school and we are still waiting for him to emerge from the cryos. A particularly poisonous little girl might sting me into saying, Fiona has the same delightful beauty as an iceberg, but unlike the iceberg, she has absolutely nothing below the surface. I think I might enjoy writing end-of-term reports for the stinkers in my class, but enough of what we have to get on occasionally. One comes across parents who take the opposite line, who show no interest at all in their children. And these, of course, are far worse than the do doting ones. Mr. and Miss Wormwood were two such parents. They had a son called Michael and a daughter called Matilda. And the parents looked upon Matilda in, a par in particle as nothing more than a scab. A scab is something you have to put with until time comes, when you can pick it off and flick it away. Mr. and Miss Wormwood looked forward enormously to the time when they could pick their little daughter off and flick her way, preferably into the next county or even further than that. It is bad enough when parents treat ordinary children as though, as though they were scabs and bunions. But it becomes somehow a lot worse when the child in question an extraordinary and by that, I mean sensitive and brilliant. Matilda was both of these things, but above all, she was brilliant. Her mind was so nimble and was so quick to learn that her ability should was should have been obvi obvious even to the most half-witted wi of parents. But Mr. and Miss Wormwood were both so gormless and were so wrapped up in their own silly little lives that, that they failed to notice, notice anything unusual about their daughter. To tell the truth, I doubt they would have noticed had, had she crawled into the house with a broken leg. Matilda's brother, Michael, was a perfectly normal boy, but the sister, as I said, was something to make your eyes pop. By the age of one and a half, her speech was perfect, and she knew as many words as most grown-ups. The parents said of applauding her, her, of applauding her called 
her a noisy chatterbox and told her sharply that small girls should be seen and not heard. By the time she was three, Matilda had taught herself to read by studying newspapers and magazines that lay around the house. At the age of four, she could read fast and well, and she naturally began ha hankering after books. The only book in the whole of this enlightened household was something called Easy Cooking Belonging to Her Mother. And when she had read this form cover to cover and had learned all the, less, all the recipes by heart, she decided she wanted something more interesting. Daddy, she said, do you think you could buy me a book? A book, he said. What do you want a flaming book for? To read, Daddy. What's wrong with the telly, for heaven's sake? We've got a lovely telly with a 12-inch screen, and now you come asking for a book? You're getting spoiled, my girl. Ne nearly every day, every week weekday afternoon, Matilda was left alone in the house. Her brother, five years older than her, went to school. Her father went to work, and her mother went out playing bingo in town eight miles away. Miss Wormwood was hooked on bingo and played it five afternoons a week. One on the afternoon of the day, when her father had refused to buy her a book, Matilda set out all by herself to walk to the public library in the village. When she arrived, she introduced herself to the librarian, Miss Phelps. She asked if she might sit a while and read a book. Miss Phelps, slightly taken aback at the arrival of such a tiny girl, unaccompanied by her by a parent, nevertheless told her she was very welcome. Where are the children's books, please? Matilda asked. They're over there, on those lower shelves, Miss Phelps told her. Would you like me to help you find a nice one with lots of pictures in it? No, thank you, Matilda said. I'm sure I can manage. From then on, every afternoon, as soon as her mother had left for bingo, Matilda would toddle down the li to the library. The walk took only ten minutes, and and this allowed her two glorious hours sitting quietly by herself in a cozy corner, devouring one book after another. When she had read every single children's book in the place, she started wandering around in search of something else. Miss Phelps, who had been watching her with fascination for the past few weeks, now got up from her desk and went over to her. Can I help you, Matilda? she asked. I'm wondering what to read next, Matilda said. I finished all the children's books. You mean you've looked at some of the pictures? Yes, but I've read the books as well, Miss Phelps looked down at Matilda from her great height and Matilda looked right back at her. I thought some were very poor, Matilda said, but others were lovely. I liked the secret garden best of all. It was full of mystery. The mystery of the the mystery of the room behind the closed door and the mystery of the garden behind the big wall. Miss Phillips was stunned. Exactly how old are you, Matilda? she asked. Four years and three months, Matilda said. Miss Phelps was more than stunned than ever, but she had the sense not to show it. What sort, what sort of a book would you like to read next, she asked. Matilda said, I would really like a good one that grown-ups read. A famous one. I don't know my na any names. Miss Phelps looked along the shelves, taking her time. She didn't quite know, how, she didn't quite know what to bring out. How she asked herself, does one choose a famous grown-up? book for a four-year-old girl. Her first thought was to pick a young teenager's romance of the kind that is written for the 15-year-old schoolgirls. But some of the reasons she found herself instantly walking past that particular shape. Try this, she said at last. It's very famous and very good. If it's too long for you, just let me know and I'll find something shorter and a bit easier. Great Expectations, Matilda read by Charles Dickens. I'd love to try it. I must I must be mad, Miss Phillips told herself, but to Matilda she said, Of course, you may try it. Over the next few afternoons, Miss Phillips 
could hardly take her eyes from the small girl sitting for hour after hour in the big armchair at the far end of the room with the book on her lap. It was necessary, necessary to rest. Okay, guys, so um, this is the end of the story that I'm going to be reading today. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It's really helped me out. And I'll see you in the other part of Matilda. See you guys.